There is no guarantee for success, but there are ways to get closer to it when you do the right things. Who you surround yourself with is just as important as what you do. Finding the right people, the right classes, the right activities, and taking the right tests are all decisions that shape your future. Find out more today on Destination University with Dr. Cynthia Colon. Dr. Colon and her guests will give you the tips you need, whether you're a student, parent, or educator. Now, here is your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon. Welcome to Destination University. If you are a college-bound teen or a champion of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. We're running a special series interviewing real teens with real dreams who have been admitted to college. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon, author of the book, Be Committed, Get Admitted, and founder of Dream College Academy and College Essay Bootcamp. Wherever you are tuning in from, you are definitely in for a treat. So grab your beverage of choice and your notepad because you're going to hear some golden nuggets from our star today, Owen. You're going to learn uh, what Owen did right, if he has any regrets at all, and he's going to reveal where he's headed to college. So without further ado, let's turn to our, our star. Hi, Owen. How are you? Hi, I'm pretty good. How are you? Good, good. Um, have you like officially graduated already? Is school over? Are you close to graduating? What's happening? Yes, we just graduated on Friday. Oh. So we just started our summer. Wow. Okay. Do you have any great plans? Like, are you like going to just lounge around? Are you going to work? What are you doing? Uh, I'm just going to try to hang out with my school friends as much as possible. Um, and yeah, we're just going to see where the summer goes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, great. Well, we have um, alumni campers from across the country. So it's good to know, you know, just share, you know, where you're tuning in from, literally like, you know, where you're located, what school, high school you go to, and maybe share a little bit about, you know, your family. So go ahead. Um, I am from Los Angeles, California, and I just graduated from Bishop Mora Salesian High School. That's fantastic. And we, um, we met, well, we met a, a while ago. I knew, knew you from your, your father, or I knew of you anyway. And we met, um, obviously, in SA camp last year. So are you, you're the first one in your family, right, to go, um, you're the oldest. So you were the first one to go through this process. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right, good. And do you have siblings? Yes, I have a younger brother who is going now into sixth grade. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, he's much younger. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, that is good. So this will be good. He'll be able to listen to your podcast years from now. We like to start with the good news. And so I want you to share with everyone where you've been, where you were admitted this year and don't tell them where you're going quite yet. We'll save that to the end, but give us the sort of range of schools that you were admitted to. So early action, I was admitted to the University of Notre Dame and Loyola Marymount University. And for regular decision, I was admitted to Cal Poly Pomona, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, uh, UCLA, UC Berkeley, and UC Santa Barbara. Oh my God. Like the luxury of riches that you have. I mean, people who are listening just would give their right arm to have any of those on their list. So that is pretty, pretty amazing. So bravo and congratulations to you. Oh, wow. So as you, the first question is really, if you want to think about your brother, if you have him in mind, the first question is really about looking back in your last four years, what did you do right? What would you, you know, what advice might you give to someone who was just starting on their process, maybe an eighth grader or a ninth grader? Um, what could you share? So I feel that throughout my years in high school, my commitment to leadership was very helpful in the college admissions process. And for those that are just starting, the advice I would give is to just go for it and try whatever interests you. Um, because whatever you try, it may be your passion without you knowing it. And also not to stretch yourself too thin um, because I believe that spending quality time in clubs and organizations is a lot better than just creating a long list of involvement. Was there something that you tried that was new in high school that you hadn't tried, you know, in middle school? Was there, what was that? Yeah, so I was in ASB my, in middle school, but in high school, I was in ASB and it was a lot different. Mm -hmm. um, and in high school, in my senior year, I was the vice president. And I didn't know that it would come with such uh, more, a lot more like responsibilities. Um, so it just, it wasn't something new, 
but it was a lot more expansive than what I thought it was going to be. So that was really cool to see. Now, share a little bit. I think it's important maybe to back up a second and share a little bit about your high school because it's a it's, it's single gender. It's all boys. So share a little bit about, just so everybody understands, um, Bishop Moore Salesian. Um, yeah, so it's an all boys high school, Catholic high school in Boyle Heights in Los Angeles. And we have four pillars that are really um, structural to us. And that's home, school, church, and playground. Wow. And each one incorporates a really big part in our lives at Salesian. And we really try to um, give all we can give to the school and the school really gives all it can give to us. So I'm really grateful for that. Wow. Say those again, home, school, church, and playground. Did I get those right? Yes. Okay. That's interesting to me that the term playground is in that because it's a high school. So what's the interpretation of that? How did you interpret the pillar of playground? So the pillar of playground is to, in a sense, like let yourself go and not be stressed all the time. Um, and so our school rallies and our football games, basketball games, they try to get as many students as they can to those um, events. And it's just a place where everyone can relax for a second and really be together and enjoy that bond together. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's great. It's a, it's a unique experience to, to have a high school experience that's single gender, you know, so for you, it's all boys. So that's really great. And I just love the boys there. I'm, I've been there many times to, to work with them and it's great. Now you said a few things, but maybe you can hone in. Um, if we were to do, you know, we're in Los Angeles, so it's always about a sizzle reel or a little movie clip of you. Um, if we were to do a 60 second highlight reel of you, um, what are some things that would stand out? We talk about what your coolness factor is. What was something that st stands out? So give us an idea of what kind of leadership you did, or maybe summer programs or what, what stands out that you feel really proud of? Um, yes, so throughout high school, I have been in 11 clubs and organizations, and I held a position in six of them in the, in the board, um, and also three varsity sports, and I was the captain of two of them. Um, and what I'm proud of is that for um, volleyball, for varsity volleyball, I helped restart the team after COVID because we didn't have a coach. And so I was named the captain my junior and senior year. And also, um, a couple of friends and I actually started an esports program at our school uh, uh -huh. my sophomore year. Uh -huh. And so that is still going really strong. We have a national championship in Madden uh, <laughs> recently. Yes. Um, Are you saying that you won the, the title? I didn't, but one of my friends did. But someone on your team did. Oh my yes. gosh. Wow. And I also did a summer Getty internship um, my junior year. So we got to um, explore different parts of the Getty Museum and create projects for middle schoolers that would visit the museum. Oh my goodness. So maybe share a little bit about that. How did you go about getting an internship with the Getty? So it was actually, uh, there was an email that was sent out to the school mm -hmm. and also to other schools around Boyle Heights. And it was about trying to get um, students in, I would say like, less income areas, that's how they kind of put it, um, into, into working and into jobs. And so it was an internship throughout the summer and they picked 15 students out of four schools and wow. we got to explore different parts of the Getty and create projects for middle schoolers so that when, go, when they go on field trips to the school, they can work on our projects. Now, what made you apply? That's, this is amazing, that's great. I mean, for, <laughs> Those who are watching and listening, they're going, um, Dr. C, did you pick up on, he was in 11 clubs and six of them were, his. <laughs> yes, I did pick up on that. And, and that is super great. And um, cer certainly many students have that, especially for the schools that you've been admitted to, a lot of st students have that. So I'm kind of picking on the thing that I think is kind of cool. Now, the Getty Museum, for those of you who are listening and don't know what that is, the Getty Museum is an art museum. Um, actually, there's a, there's the villa and on, in, um, along PCH and then there's the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Are you interested, if I remember correctly, you're not necessarily interested in art. What made you apply for this internship? Yes, so we worked at the Getty Villa Museum and they stated as a STEAM um, kind of workshop. So science, technology, engineering, art, and math. 
And so we kind of incorporated all of those aspects into the project that we were going to do. Uh, I got it. I it totally makes sense now. So yes. they were doing STEAM uh, instead of STEM. Oh, oh, okay. So that's why you applied. Wow, that's a pretty amazing. And you said that was between your junior and senior year? Yes, in that summer. Okay, awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay, and then you were a three-sport athlete. And I mean, the thing that you did, um, you know, with COVID uh, or, or after COVID, you know, you talked about, if you heard Owen talk about how he helped bring the team back because they didn't have a coach, that was number one. And, um, and then number two that I really honed in, honed in on was... Um, this esports that you started, uh, did it start while you guys were still uh, doing school from home? When did it start? Yes. So um, we went into quarantine at home learning our second half of our freshman year. Yeah. And at the very start of our sophomore year, um, they started to do like talk about esports, but they didn't really have a lot of students that were kind of involved. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of friends and I who were really uh, involved in this game called Rocket League, decided to make, it, it kind of started as a club um, to play and then it transitioned to a whole sport. Wow. It's amazing that um, some people that are listening may not even know that that is a thing now. And and if I, I feel like I've been look, looking and researching also that's major, like that you can mm -hmm. major in esports now. I, I don't know how many colleges have it, but that's a, that's a real thing. So Wow, that's amazing. Uh, so I love what this tells the story of Owen is it shows his leadership and his perseverance and also just like, you know, colleges like people who are resourceful, you know, get things done, you know, make it happen, those kinds of things, because you need that, you need those skills in college. So, you know, anyway, good for you, Owen. Um so the college process is not always easy, although you, if you're watching, you're thinking, well, Owen got into pretty much everywhere. Um but it, it, it does have its ups and downs. And so I'm wondering if there's any, you know, candor that you can share with us. Is, was there anything that you would look back and say you, you either regretted or you wish you would have done differently, whether it had to do with high school, what you did academically or co-curricularly, or actually the actual process, college admission process? Yes. So personally, I believe that I should have spent more time with my peers and teachers and discussed topics that I was having trouble on or just wanted more insight on um, because it was only towards the end of high school kind of like the beginning of my senior year yeah. that I realized how valuable my peers and my teachers could be in my academic life and as far as the college admissions process goes I think it was incredibly helpful to start early um, a lot of the colleges gave their writing prompts in the summer and I looked at them and tried to find different ways to write about them. Mm -hmm. And this overall just had me, I wasn't as stressed as my friends um, when it came to writing. You did the essay camp with us, I wanna say in August, is that, that, that correct? Yes. Yeah, but it sounds like you were doing some research even before that to get prepared for the, the, the questions you had to write. I mean, the questions, you, the prompts that you were gonna have to um, submit. Um, you know, great point about your peers and your teachers. Um, they're just filled with information and good experiences. And so it sounds like you'll take that lesson and, and hopefully apply it in, when you're in college and spend more time with your peers and your, in this case, professors. So that's a really good point. So everybody watching, listening, write that down because uh, that's very, very true. Um, that you can, you should bond with your the adults that are in your life and your peers as well. So, um, okay. So we're getting close to where you're going to reveal, but before you reveal where you actually, which college you actually chose as your new home, um, what was most important to you? What were the factors that you, that you took into consideration as you made this choice? Were there, are there three or four main things that you valued most for your home? Um, so I'm going to major in engineering and I knew college was going to be tough. So I looked for a school that was, that had a reasonable student to teacher ratio, um, a good reputation in engineering and overall prestige. And I feel that with a school with a great support system would really help me excel in whatever I wanted to do. Oh my goodness. 
Okay, not many students, this is very savvy, write this down, everybody. Um, a good student to faculty ratio. It's a really savvy little thing to, to know or to look for. And with engineering, it's a hard, it's one of the hardest major, majors. So you really want to have that support, right? High challenge with high support, you know, will, will equal success. So, okay. So those were the things that were really important to you. Now we already know where you got in and like, wow, I mean, again, the riches of the, the, the luxury of choices that you had. So I'm going to just do a little drum roll and then you're going to tell us where you go. I said, Ooh. all right, Owen, here we go. Uh, so I chose to attend the University of Notre Dame, um, go Irish. Go Irish. Let's see your sweatshirt. I think you've got it on, oh, right? Oh, yes. I have my sweatshirt. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Okay. I am a Trojan, so I'm not supposed to love anything that Notre Dame. But everyone I know, my my students and, and friends of mine who I know who have been to, who went to Notre Dame, they are unbelievably class act people, all of them. I mean, they just have this kind of... Um, uh, a little swagger, but, but like humble swagger, if that's a thing. Um, so, mm -hmm. so, so proud of you. So, so back it up. So did, what did it come down to? Can you share, maybe it was it down to two or three schools when it came time for in April? Yes. Yeah, so I actually got to the university of Notre Dame first. That was the first acceptance that I got. <laughs> and that was always my dream school. Um, and I was still waiting on UCLA and UC Berkeley, which were my other decisions. And I got to those, but really, really came down to was um, finances. And mm -hmm. it turned out that Notre Dame was a lot less expensive than UCLA or UC Berkeley. Uh, so that's ultimately what helped me make my decision. Wow, so this is really an interesting point. Um, this doesn't surprise me, but it might surprise our listeners that, because Notre Dame is um, a private institution, with a, with a high sticker price. And the California schools, um, as we know, those of you who live in California um, know that you know this is the best public institution with a really great price tag. So it goes to show, I mean, were you surprised too? I mean, maybe your parents were surprised to, to know that it was going to ultimately cost a little less to go to Notre Dame. Was that surprising to you guys? Yes, definitely. Wow, that's amazing. So the lesson here to everyone is to not let the sticker price shock you and prevent you from applying because uh, you just don't know. The same is true for me. Um, this is, although I'm ancient, you know, in terms of like when we went to college, but the same was true for student friends of mine who went to USC and also was, were admitted to UCLA. They said similar things. So, um, you know, and I'm not an expert on financial aid, so I can't explain how and why that works, but sometimes it works out that way. So now, um, I'm dying for you to share maybe just one little nugget, like a, a tradition of, at Notre Dame that you really love or that you learned about or that was surprising. So I'm hoping to be surprised by something you share. <laughs> um, okay, so a cool fact about Notre Dame is that the football helmets and the graduation diplomas have a little bit of gold on them from the real Golden Dome on campus. What? The diplomas too? Yes. Oh, that is something I did not know. That's pretty amazing. Now the helmets, the football helmets, I believe they're like freshly painted every single week, right? I mean, I imagine because- I they, believe so. Yeah. I'm not sure how often, but pretty often. Oh my gosh. Well, what are you most looking forward to, to doing outside of your major? Like, you know, is football the thing you're most excited about or is there something else? Um, I think just exploring different things that might interest me. Um, there's a lot of clubs that I've been looking at. And when I visited, they had a club fair. And that was really cool to see. Um, just, yeah, exploring my interests and seeing what excites me. And hello, winter and fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you will finally be able to experience that. I, I love to, to tease Californians who are going to head to Midwest or East Coast. So that is <laughs> Fantastic. So, okay. This has been great. Um, hold on. I'm going to just do the closing here and then we'll just wave goodbye. So, so good. Oh my goodness. You guys, I told you you were in for a treat and Owen is just, I mean, you can tell he's a rock star um, student and leader. So, um, so bravo to him. It takes a lot of courage and bravery to go through this process. And he had great um, 
supporters and cheerleaders and believers at, at, at Salesian. So there you go. Thank you so much, Owen, for being with us today. If you are watching and you want to learn more about the college admission process or want to hear about our Dream College Academy or College Jesse Bootcamp, head on over to my website to download a free gift from me. You can go to Dr. Cynthia Colon, C-O-L-O-N.com, or you can also just type in destination university, like the name of this podcast, it will take you to the very same place. If Owen has in any way helped to fuel your confidence or build your own dreams, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe. You can also comment and we'll be, uh, and we'll comment back. Or if you have a question, please join the conversation. That is all I have for you, my dreamers. Welcome to the Destination University family where college dreams really do come true. Join us every week, same time, same place. Until then, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening this week to Destination University. Be sure to join Dr. Cynthia Colon again and get one step closer to your success. 